I may as well discuss briefly my ideas and thoughts of the first Sonic the Hedgehog movie that came out two years ago. Man, does time fly. I remember just walking out of seeing that one. Happy to say I feel the same level of excitement walking out of this one than I did the first one two years ago when it was confirmed that we were getting a sequel. So we're getting another one. With the original disaster trailer that made Sonic look like a demi-human, it was pretty inevitable that whether or not it was going to succeed with critics and fans, it seemed as though it was still going to be notorious in its legacy. Very exciting to see on how the studio that made the first Sonic movie as well as the original director completely took the feedback and the bullying that they got from the internet and completely overhauled the whole movie and brought to us actually one of the best video game adaptation movies in recent years. So knowing that Jeff Fowler is still on board for the sequel, certainly above average expectations at this point for sure. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I'll definitely have a spoiler discussion at the very end of this review. So with the first one overall, it was a lot of fun. It had a surprising amount of heart, even though the themes overall were pretty cliche. You've seen it many times before in many kids' movies. It was still presented in a very tasteful format that both kids, young adults, and more grown adults I can see enjoying. I believe I gave it a 7 out of 10 initially, back when I first saw it. Upon rewatching it again, I still feel it has the same strong suits. Of course, the standout role being Jim Carrey for Dr. Robotnik or Eggman, sorry, but I call him Eggman. Man. That's how I grew up calling him. So but I understand those who are older than me, those who grew up in the 90s. It certainly paved the way for more potential in what I would consider still one of the best video game adaptations to come out in recent years. And surprisingly, for a sequel, it still holds that title, I believe. Let me discuss my history with Sonic the Hedgehog as if I had a past relationship with him. I grew up actually playing some of the original Sonic games that were available on the newer systems. The original games on the Sega Genesis were available on the Wii and the older consoles. So it was nice to play old older games that were certainly before my time. I really got into the franchise with the 3D Sonic games, even though yes, I understand that each of the titles throughout the 2000s have some controversy behind them when it comes to design choices. Besides 06, I found enjoyment out of all the Sonic games that came out, especially during the Wii era. I believe after Sonic Generations is when I departed from playing the video games. Grew up watching the television show that came out, the Sonic X, as well as snippets of Sonic Boom. I certainly see a lot of charm and potential with all the characters established in this world. It's very witty, it's very fun, very high energy, and just very much my style. I understand that with these movies, I'm sure the screenplay writers wanted to go for something else when it comes to of course paying lots of homages to the original video games, but of course wanting to tell new twists on familiar stories that we know from the Sonic games, which I can always go for. It is no surprise that a lot of fun can still be found with the utmost respectful techniques and dedicated fan service I've seen in any media that goes back to my childhood. Jeff Fowler clearly has an understanding of what fans of the Sonic franchise, at least the majority of them, what they want to see. Not the weirdos, we don't claim them. After finding out he's actually been working at Sega for a few decades almost at this point developing on the Sonic games. It's no surprise knowing that he understands the character and what made him popular to begin with. Back when Sega was putting out more consistent video games, it's inevitable that the success of those games will be met here with the movies as well. Picking up where we left off at the end of the first movie where Sonic is brought into Tom? Is his name Tom? I don't know. Human characters? Do you expect me to remember them? Not really. Whatever. James Marsden's home. As a member of his family now, the return of Dr. Robotnik, Eggman. It starts a domino effect of other extraterrestrial beings coming onto Earth that entails and knuckles. They are all after what is called the Master Emerald, which contains all of the Chaos Emeralds. For those that are new to Sonic lore or don't understand Sonic lore, this actually is something that is established in the, both the video games and the TV shows. Just ultimate power for whoever is able to access all of these emeralds. So of course, any villain would of course want to get access to all these emeralds to then take over the world and over the galaxy. You know, cliche bullshit like that. So of course, they need to keep Dr. Robot hey, Eggman, Eggman from obtaining the weed crystal. With an unlikely duo between Eggman and Knuckles, the hunt is on for our heroes to beat them to the master emerald in order to keep the world and galaxy in balance from Eggman becoming an all-powerful deity. Very simple storyline, very effective storyline for sure. The movie certainly doubles down on the situations as well as the number of cast members that we have compared to the first movie, for good and for worse. Obviously seeing the actual Sonic crew assembled together, whether they're going against each other or working together, it's always fun to see them all on screen at the same time. Seeing them go through their high stakes adventures through East Serbia to Hawaii, all these different exotic locations that you would find in the Sonic games, it's great. It's fun to watch. However, a bit too much screen time was unfortunately dedicated to not just the main human characters, but the supporting human characters. The supporting human characters. Characters that we briefly saw who got a couple laps out of the first movie got their own dedicated story here. And it was pretty grueling. 
particularly the side plot involving a wedding. Me and my friends that watched it were just looking at each other what felt like 10 minutes into a whole dedicated segment of just an uncut storyline where we were just like, where are the Sonic characters? Why are we here for so long? I mean, granted, we did get a few laughs out of it. It was certainly entertaining, but it was just so bizarre on how long some of these segmented sequences with the human characters were. It just felt like it should have been either cut shorter, both in the script or the cut that we saw in theaters. It was very jarring and just very confusing to spend so much time on human characters that we really don't care about. Definitely not the worst case of human boring characters taking over screen time from characters we want to see displayed. I just that moment just took me out of the primary plot, which I did not appreciate. Let's hone in on the returning main characters as well as the new main characters that we have here. The cast all around gave great entertaining performances. Idris Elba as Knuckles at first news when I first heard about his casting. It seemed odd to me at first due to his British accent. However, after hearing just how natural Idris Elba's regular voice it seemed like fits Knuckles by the end, it really sounded like he didn't alter his voice performance in any way. It was just him talking regularly. Surprisingly, he had a, a good amount of dry, witty humor, where basically he doesn't understand basic human behavior. But it was actually pretty charming and pretty fun, I would say. By the end, spoiler, spoiler, when it's inevitable that when Eggman betrays him and Knuckles has to join the Sonic crew, by the end of the movie, it's certainly clear that they start to lean more for Knuckles becoming just the goofy knucklehead that, that is usually associated with him in other medias of Sonic. Of course, so I'm looking forward to seeing more of him in the next one. Jim Carrey's return as Eggman is still delightful and with all of his mannerisms and line deliveries, it's Jim Carrey. You always expect entertainment out of that. However, a noticeable change I noticed with the writing of this Eggman, Robotnik, whatever you want to call him, I thought he was funnier in the first movie because what I noticed, there were actually a lot of innuendos in the first movie when it came to Jim Carrey's lines. It was just so bizarre and absurd to the point where it was just pure hilarity to me personally. This particular movie's style of humor, it felt as though it catered more to a younger audience, which you can say that both of these movies do for sure, but it seemed as though this one even more so. It didn't seem like they really try to sneak in any jokes that the adults would appreciate. It's not exactly made for my demographic now, but I just want to see Eggman throwing a couple slurs there. That's all I'm asking for. You know, your share of fart jokes and your share of just cringy pop culture dance moves or just other cringy pop culture references for reference sakes and maybe not because the butt of the joke or the natural flow of the joke fits. Comedy is subjective. That's just a personal preference for me. Maybe I just like a bit of edge to my child humor still. Here I got the impression though that Eggman was a lot more menacing and powerful than he was in the first one. He was a much bigger threat here this time, and I think that was the best move to go for instead of just making him more of just the spastic non-threats, it seemed in the first movie. <laughs> definitely more menacing and more deranged. He definitely stepped it up. Those are about the standout roles for me. Every other performance in the movie was fine. Nothing beyond memorable, nor nothing beyond forgettable. It's cool having the same voice actors for Tails from the recent video games that have come out voice him here, including him and all of his gadget use and his bond with Sonic that grows over this movie. It's very sweet and it's very reminiscent of the relationship that was found in the video games. So I certainly appreciate it there. Now let's move on to the visual effects here. Uh, it was a mixed bag for me. The original studio that Paramount paired with to make the first movie went bankrupt after having to redo the whole movie essentially after the backlash and having to remodel Sonic himself. It's certainly interesting that they still got the same director and I'm not too certain about how much of the same team from the first movie was brought back on to work on this one, but I certainly wish the best for that studio and I have so much respect for that studio for taking feedback on the chin and just completely actually listening to it and just saying, okay, we'll do that. <laughs> Sure, we'll go bankrupt. Bankruptcy is overrated. Yeah. Whatever studio worked on the post-production for this particular movie though, you know, it happens. Sometimes certain shots may look underdeveloped or may perhaps did not render correctly. That happens. I certainly have a lot of sympathy for visual effects editors like that. It just seemed as though some of the moments where the visuals seemed jarring or confusing was in moments you, I didn't expect to see them. You expect to see underdeveloped models or just unfinished effects with the CGI characters, but in the case here, moments with Jim Carrey in particular, whenever it came to him in his little eggshell floating around, him with the obvious green screen backgrounds, those were the moments that kind of took me out of the movie for brief moments. Felt like as if I was watching just a high budget YouTube video at times. Again, it's odd because the CGI character models, everything they do on screen, it looks fantastic. All the locations, all the exotic locations, 
locations that are clearly built on computer graphics, it looks amazing. I guess maybe the whole budget for the whole movie's post-production process went to that, or maybe it was just simply overlooked. I don't know. Let's discuss the themes that stuck with me with this epic tale. The idea of taking responsibility for oneself by prioritizing not yourself, but others around you that are worth protecting. It's repeated here to, you know, decent succession, doesn't beat you over the head with it. Certainly a theme that I'm sure many people can understand and relate to. Same goes for the concept of bringing in new people to form a bigger family. Even when it comes to people who aren't related to you, people you just met, sometimes new faces that aren't exactly related to you can still become family to you. It was actually pretty sweet and wholesome, especially when it came to the characters of Tales. Oh man, did the writers just pull through with tasteful fan service here, which is short of nothing of a miracle considering this movie had three separate screenplay writers. So it's pretty damn impressive on how they were able to get a good balance between stuff that is certainly a bit on the nose with current pop culture references and stuff that is actually something for the Sonic fans to look at point and be just like, oh my god, look at that. It could be cheap for those who didn't grow up with it, but for someone who grew up with it, oh god, you can't help but get excited. Come on. So many references to the original Sonic the Hedgehog video games for sure ranging from location set pieces combat moves that we see when it came to the fight scenes and a bit of smash brothers even when it came to some of sonic's moves that he pulled on knuckles my hopes for the super smash brothers cinematic universe is still i still got faith in that just squealing like a little kid both on the inside and the outside again that was nice it's difficult when both my film structure critic side as well as just my sonic childhood nostalgia shell side come out and just wrestle and toggle with each other but it's just a mix of what sonic nostalgics like me can enjoy as well as just people who enjoy just the more recent shit post culture of making sonic an absolute meme which i am of course all for as well i love and adore both aspects of it not the furry side stay away from me I feel like the first two acts in this one, in plot and action, were more consistent in the first movie. To be honest, I felt like maybe certain side characters just got too much screen time, or maybe even some of the events and setups seemed to just linger far too long. So that was my main gripe when it came to the pacing overall of the movie. But oh my god, did the climactic fight of the last part of the second act going into the third act? It was epic. It was absolutely epic. So first movie had seemed to have just a stronger two structural act and sort of an underwhelming third act, while this one, this sequel, had a mixed first two acts with a spectacular third act. Interesting how they just completely mirrored that. I'm pretty much equal both movies. I would say I both enjoy them equally, and I'm surprised that a sequel can still kind of can still hold up to the original sometimes that doesn't happen too too often so certainly enjoy it now while we have it sequelitis is very rampant so i'm very glad that the whole team that worked on this seemed to really care and love sonic and that's the bare minimum that we video game fans should ask for or it just seems to be the bare minimum that filmmakers should take when it comes to doing adaptations of any property whether it's a novel video game anything structural problems for me in the script and pacing would make my film critic side give it a 6 out of 10 overall but since it did pander to my nostalgia admittedly and squeeze my member berries till they were juiced out 7 out of 10 mostly fun characters and fun action bogged down by bland or underwhelming human character moments Hmm, well, as for spoilers, I don't believe there's much to really talk about when it comes to this particular movie. When Sonic ran across the ocean water, foreshadowing what Jesus would do in the Bible, that was, oh, epic. Oh man, when Eggman got a hold of the weed crystal and huffed it up, ooh, that was epic. He was scary. When the Death Egg robot came out, ooh, that was awesome. Ooh, when Sonic got all the Chaos Emeralds and became Super Sonic covered in piss and everything, ooh, that was epic. Oh man, when Sonic stopped the punch of that Death Egg robot with just one hand and completely took it down, ooh, that was awesome. And last but not least, with the final end credit scene featuring my boy Shadow the Hedgehog, the edgy bastard, he is going to be our antagonist for Sonic the Hedgehog 3. I actually screamed. Me and nearly everybody in the theater that I was in. I don't think I've screamed that hard in the theater since the first Sonic movie post credit scene or Avengers Endgame. This was more epic than Avengers Endgame. This was pinnacle cinema here. Oh my god, I'm so excited to see what the third one has in store. And I'm curious to know who on earth is going to be voicing Shadow the Hedgehog. I'm thinking Keanu Reeves. I think he has the voice. Nice cock. Oh yeah, I can definitely imagine him voicing Shadow. Here's to you, Jeff Fowler. Here's to you, the whole production team that made the 
these movies. I am hoping to God that Paramount does not pull the plug on this at all because we need a third Sound the Hedgehog movie next. You guys are gonna finish these movies off and you need to finish it off in a proper trilogy for sure. Jim Carrey, I hope you don't retire from acting. If you are want to do one last hurrah for us in the third Sonic movie, we would love to have you. I would love to see you again, please, sir. Do not retire yet. You are an absolute gem. Your legacy will be that you finished with Sonic 3. Your legacy will be cemented in the history books. <laughs> Those are basically my thoughts. So yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Have you guys seen it? What do you guys think? Are you guys furries? If you are, please log off. Thank you.